Hi everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Cultivation Corner with me, Jerry. We're going to talk about a certain kind of insect today, but can you name some bugs you might find in the garden? How about a spider or a worm that aerates the soil? How about a caterpillar that turns into a butterfly with beautiful wings or even a dragonfly? Today, we're going to focus on ladybugs, a type of beetle. The ladybug family is huge. They live all around the world, except Antarctica where it's too cold for them. And there are over 5,000 species. Can you believe that? The most common one here in New York where we live is the seven spotted red ladybug. In the UK, where ladybugs originated, they're called ladybird beetles. They're named after the Virgin Mary. It was said that a ladybug reminded people of the Virgin Mary because she was often depicted wearing red and with her seven sorrows surrounding her, like the seven spots on the most common type of ladybug. In many cultures, the ladybug is considered good luck. So if you find one, you're going to have a good day. I wanted to talk to you about ladybugs because I've been finding them here in my garden and I've been happy to find them. That's because ladybugs eat other bugs. In this case, they eat aphids, which are eating all the plants in my garden. So instead of me killing them with some sort of pesticide, the ladybugs eat them and it's an organic way of, to control pests. Ladybugs can eat up to 5,000 bugs in their lifetime and they can live up to two or three years. That's because they're active from the spring through the fall and then they hibernate in the winter. Maybe they even hide here in the greenhouse where it's warm or they tuck into a log or some place where they can be protected. Speaking of protection, do you know why a ladybug is so brightly colored or why it even has spots? That's protection too. The color, whether it's red or yellow or a deep black or brown and spots ranging from two to 20 something, they're all signs to tell predators, don't eat me, I don't taste good. Let's talk about our vocabulary a little, right? So we usually say bug, but the real word is insect in Spanish. El insecto. Insects range from all different types of things like worms and spiders to beetles and butterflies. In Spanish, la maraquita means ladybug. And we'll talk a little bit today about the life cycle, el ciclo vital. I've got a great video to show you about that. Let's check it out now.
comment and subscribe. Wasn't that cool? You can see how they go from being eggs to a little bit bigger and almost looking like a tiny alligator. And then after shedding layers and layers of skin and shells, they become what we know to be a ladybug. Now let's talk about the anatomy a little. Every beetle has an abdomen and thorax. That's like our middle section. So that's where all of their organs are. All beetles also have six legs. Can you count with me? One, two, three, four, five, and six is hiding under here, okay? Six legs. They also have eyes, two, just like us. And antennae sticking right off their heads, two of those two. Now what's special about a ladybug is that they have a lot of protection. Their wings are hidden under something called the elytra. So the elytra is a hard shell that protects them. If you see a ladybug laying on a plant, it has a flat bottom so it can stick on nicely and a rounded dome shape. That's the elytra, the shell protecting its wings and abdomen. It also has something called a pronotum which is another kind of hard shell that protects its small head. So I thought it would be a lot of fun if we made our own ladybugs. That's your at home activity this week. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. I've made a few examples from things that I've found in my house with just some construction paper, paint and glue, scissors with your parents' help, and even something as simple as a toilet paper roll, a paper plate, or an egg carton, you can make a ton of ladybugs. Here's one I made from an egg carton. This one is two paper plates painted and glued together with the head and don't forget the antennas. So I want you to hunt around and see what you want to make your ladybug out of. Do you want to make one together? Cool. I wanted to make one out of a bottle cap. Everyone probably has a bottle around or a jar. You can make it out of a jar cap too. So we're going to just take the cap. We don't need the bottle. We do like to repurpose the bottles. You can make a hanging planter, a self-watering hanging planter, but we'll do that another time. So we just need the cap. Since we're surrounded by red ladybugs, how about we make a yellow one? Here we go. So I've got some yellow paint and we're just gonna put it right on our bottle cap. Instead of using paint, you could use a marker, you could cover it in construction paper. It's up to you and whatever you find, okay? So I'm gonna use this itty bitty brush here and paint our itty bitty bottle cap. So what part of the ladybug would this be? That's right, the elytra, the hard shell that covers the abdomen. And just like an actual ladybug, it's flat on one side and then rounded. It's okay to make a little bit of a mess when we're crafting, right? but we always clean up afterwards. Okay, so while our bottle cap dries, what else do we need? That's right, the antennae. I only have silver paper pipe cleaners, but you can make them out of construction paper, you can make them out of string, whatever makes you happy. I think we'll add a little sparkle to this guy. So we'll just cut a little piece of pipe cleaner and fold it in half. That makes for two. How about that? What else does our ladybug need? Since we're having its elytra closed, we don't need to make the wings and it'd be tough to make such tiny legs. How about we add some spots? How many spots should this one have? 
I think two would be perfect. So I'm gonna draw here. At home, take your time and let the paint dry, okay? If you're making a similar one. I'm gonna draw a dot on each side, a line down the middle, and the head up top. Let's come close so you can see. Here we go. So once the paint dries, we'll make the, the spots darker and attach our antennas and we'll have a cute little ladybug. Thanks for learning with me and crafting with me. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Remember, email your ladybug photos or even videos to me, Jerry G. Sherman at khcc-nyc.org. See you next time.